So the main reason that food tastes better at restaurants is not because chefs use more salt, but because they know how to use it properly. In fact, if you season properly while cooking, not only will you never need to use salt at the table again, but your food will taste a lot better because it'll be better seasoned all throughout. But I don't need to tell you that, we all know that salting is the most important aspect of cooking. Unfortunately though, most home cooks still aren't doing it right, and if you're like I was not too long ago, you might be making some of these exact same mistakes without even realizing it. You see, if you want your food to be seasoned well, you not only need to use the right amount of salt, but you also need to distribute it evenly. And perhaps most importantly, you need it to be thoroughly integrated into your dish. So common practice tells us to use salt like this, 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 or worst of all, this. But none of those methods are ideal. When you're using a salt shaker or any other type of container, it's hard to tell how much salt you're actually using, especially if you're using table salt, because those minuscule grains make it pretty hard to see where the salt is ending up. And let's just get this one out of the way. Salt doesn't need to be ground fresh. It's not something that can go bad. I mean, it's literally been on the earth since the beginning of time. If that's not shelf stable, I don't know what is. But anyways, even if you use the right quantity of salt, for example, by using a measuring spoon, it's hard to distribute it evenly. And if you're always always relying on measurements, you're never going to develop an intuitive feel for how much salt you need to use, which is super important. Great cooks salt by taste and by feel, not by following a recipe to the T. So this not only makes cooking quicker, easier, and more enjoyable, but it just makes more sense. I mean, you're ultimately going to be eating the food, not measuring it. So why would you rely on measurements to cook it? Instead, you should rely mostly on your taste. But before we talk about how to do that, along with how to start salting the proper way, we need to talk about what type of salt you should be using in the first place. Because this is another crucial crucial aspect that most home cooks aren't getting right. And it's something that you can change right now to start seeing results immediately. So the brand I use is Diamond Crystal Kosher Salt. And the main reason I like it is because it has very large non-dense grains. What's the opposite of dense? I don't know. Anyways, the large grains make it very easy to see and feel, and the lower density makes it much easier to fine tune the salt levels in your dish and to avoid adding too much. So here's 10 grams of Diamond Crystal Kosher Salt compared to 10 grams of Morton Table Salt. And you can see the massive difference. The kosher salt takes up a about double the volume for the same amount of salt. So before you comment on one of my videos saying, you're using so much salt. No, I'm not, Daniel. I'm using a normal amount of salt. It's just less dense. But, but I don't need to eat kosher. Why would I use kosher salt? Well, that's actually another common misconception, but I mean, nobody could be blamed for thinking that. The name kosher salt is pretty misleading, but actually it just has that name because it's used in the traditional Jewish koshering process in which blood is removed from meat. So in reality, kosher salt is just a pure large grain salt, which makes it ideal for cooking. However, one disadvantage you might hear about kosher salt is that it doesn't dissolve as quickly as table salt because it has larger grains. But that's another misconception. It actually dissolves quicker because the irregularly shaped grains have a lot more surface area in contact with the water. Plus that increased surface area means it sticks to food better rather than jumping off like a bunch of tiny little bouncy balls. And in my testing, I was able to confirm both of those conclusions. The most important thing is just that you get familiar with whatever salt you do use so that over time, seasoning your food perfectly will become second nature. Okay, that's all great, but how do we actually salt our food to make it taste better? Well, we can start by avoiding another one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of home cooks make, which is to add salt toward the end of the cooking process because they just assume that salt is salt. But I'm here to tell you that salt is not salt. I mean, salt added at the beginning of the cooking process is much more powerful than salt added at the end of the cooking process. Let's take a basic chicken fried rice, for example. Many beginners might get all the way to the end of the process once every ingredient is combined in the pan before they start adding salt. But doing it this way, you're basically just seasoning the exteriors of everything. So your dish won't taste well seasoned. It'll just taste like you added salt to it. To create a more cohesive and flavorful dish, you want every component to be seasoned inside and out. So that means seasoning the chicken first, preferably at least 30 minutes to an hour in advance. Which as I described in my brining video, not only ensures that the chicken is seasoned inside and out, but it tenderizes the chicken and helps it maintain its juiciness while cooking. This also means seasoning the rice with salt when you cook it rather than after, seasoning the vegetables right when they're added to the pan, seasoning the eggs before before you beat them, and at each step in the process, tasting your food and adding more salt as necessary. I mean, except for the chicken, don't taste raw chicken. Meat is sort of just something where you get an intuitive sense for how to season it over time. If you do wanna cook one small piece first as a tester, you can do that, but I usually don't bother. Now, it may seem like we're using a lot of salt, but we're only using a little bit at a time, just enough to season each component. So we're not using more salt overall. In fact, we should actually need less because the salt we are using is much more impactful. Now also keep in mind that as you taste and adjust, you'll also need to account for any salty ingredients that you'll be adding later. In this case, I add soy sauce and oyster sauce at the very end. So up until that point, I was looking for my dish to be a bit undersalted so that by the time I add those last ingredients, it'll be perfectly seasoned. 
But now finally, let's get back to the task at hand. So if you shouldn't use a salt shaker, container, grinder, or a measuring spoon, then what should you use? Well, you've probably already figured it out by now, but you should sprinkle your salt by hand. I mean, there's a reason you always see chefs doing this. When you salt by hand, you can both see and feel how much salt you're using, and you have much better control over where it lands. So measurements can be a good guideline to use, especially when you're just starting out, or where you're making recipes like bread where it's not really feasible to taste them early in the process, but you shouldn't rely entirely on measurements. When you combine sprinkling by hand with tasting and adjusting your food as you cook, all of a sudden you're working with three senses rather than just one. So very quickly you'll develop a hand-eye-tongue connection, or as I like to call it, a salter's intuition, a term that I definitely didn't make up just for this video. Anyways, I mentioned earlier that salting your food in advance can be extremely powerful, and in my deep dive video about brining, I explained exactly how that works and how you can apply it. So I'd recommend checking that video out right here. It's probably the one thing I've started doing that's had the biggest impact on my cooking. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you in that video.